Welcome Superstar. This video is a quick overview and review of some of my insights from Rob Scheinfeld's book, Busting Loose from the Money Game. First, a little bit about how this video is gonna go. I'm gonna share with you a bit of backstory about how I came across this book. Then I'll share with you some of the parallels that I've seen with this book and some other ones that I've read. I'll get into the premise and the context of this book. I'll talk about the process that Rob shares in the book, which is amazing. And finally, I'll recommend some similar books that you might want to read if you liked this book. First, I wanna share with you a little bit about how this book came into my world because it's so unusual. As essentially, somebody that I really admire, uh, who I really look up to in terms of her coaching ability and her spirituality, she brought me this book. And I, when I saw the name, Busting Loose from the Money Game with this, the cover with the guy jump busting out of this you know, window or whatever, with all these bright colors and the funky font, I was like, why would you be reading this book? I judged the book by its cover, I found it lacking. And she said, ignore the cover, ignore the name of the book, it's really good and it's right up your alley. Even so, I ignored it and I didn't read it. And then a client of mine, same thing, she brought it, she said, I'm reading this book, my God, Michelle, you're gonna love it, it's so up your alley. And I was like, but the name, and she said, I know, I know. The friend of mine that told me to read it said, ignore the cover, ignore the name of the book, just trust me, it's so good. So I went ahead and I finally listened and I got the Audible. And I'm so excited that I did because it was such a really game-changing book. And so for you, if you've thought about reading it or if you've never heard of it and you're a little bit put off by the cover of the title, let me be the first one to tell you, ignore those two things and buy it and read it anyways. One of the things that I love about it is that it really echoes certain truths that I've found again and again and again in my own journey to develop myself, to have a spiritual practice, to awaken to a new way of being. So it aligns with so many of the other things that I've read. This idea that it comes up with, that it shares about diving into discomfort is one that I've talked about again and again on my videos. And by the way, if you're new to my channel, take this opportunity to subscribe, please like this video, and share a little bit about yourself below in the comments. So the premise or the context of this book is what is really different and unique. He basically talks about quantum theory, quantum physics, and the idea that we live in a holographic universe. Now this is a mind blowing concept and I'm not gonna dive deep into it because I could never ever do it justice. But essentially what he's saying and what I absolutely know in my bones to be true is that there is a deeper layer of reality than what we see in front of us. Now in some schools of thought that layer of reality is called consciousness, is called source, is called the field, the zero point field, whatever it is, but there's this underlying layer of reality that underpins what we see around us. I'll call it the field, and I think he mostly calls it the field too. If you think about, for example, the analogy of Plato's cave, right? The idea that there are people talking, laughing, doing things, and there's a light shining on those people and projecting shadows onto a cave. If someone lived only in that cave and only saw the shadows on the wall, they might think that those shadows were reality. When in fact, there's another layer of reality, which is the humans that are casting those shadows, right? Similarly, in a holographic universe, the idea is that there's some deeper layer of reality that's casting a projection like the shadows on the wall, and that projection is what we're seeing. That projection is like a hologram. I'm not gonna get into hologram technology because that's really, really complicated. But essentially the idea is that there is this underlying field of reality where actually energetically, at a subatomic level, that's where everything is really happening and what we're experiencing in the world is the projection of that. So if you accept that premise, which by the way, there's really, really good evidence from quantum physics that, that, that that's actually the case, this idea of a holographic universe. If you accept that, then what Rob Scheinfeld shares in the book is how to make changes 
on the underlying reality rather than trying to make changes in the projection. Right? It's similar to you can't you don't make changes in the shadows themselves. You make changes in the reality that the light is shining on that casts the shadows onto the wall, right? So similarly, Rob Scheinfeld is saying, hey, if you really want to change your relationship with money, you want to change your relationship with reality, with everything, stop trying to make the changes in the physical world and start trying to make them in the underlying field. And so now I'm gonna share with you the process whereby, by which you can do that. So here's a disclaimer. Even if you don't understand the idea of a holographic universe, even if you don't believe in it, try to put that aside and just trust that this process has pretty sound underpinnings in science and in research and experience. And just consider that the process could work even if you don't fully believe it or understand it, okay? So the process is essentially the, the metaphor that Rob Scheinfeld uses, which is really comes from a book by Michael Talbot called The Holographic Universe. The process that he says is, is basically a way of regaining power from places where we've limited ourselves. So I'll see if I can get this out right, if I can really explain this. But imagine this reality as like a video game that's being managed on an underlying level. Just like you play a video game, you're the, the original reality, and the video game is the projection, right? If you use this metaphor, just imagine, if you will, that at the beginning of the video game, the first few decades of your life, you're, you're born this helpless creature this child, and over the course of these years and decades, the early part of your life, you're basically hiding away your power, your limiting power. You're, you're finding all the ways that you are limited, right? I can't do this. I need to be perfect. I need to do that. I, you know, I don't like this. I can't do these things. I'm not good at that. We create all these limitations on ourselves, and then we call that our self, right? I am a person who is messy. I'm disorganized. I struggle with this. I'm not good at relationships. I get taken advantage of, right? All these beliefs that the first part of life is all about giving up our power and limiting ourselves. Once we have this awakening, right? That we're, the one, what we're talking about right now, we can reclaim our power bit by bit. And he likens this to like eggs. You know how they put Easter eggs in video games where you can find an Easter egg and you can whoosh, gather more power from that egg. Well, each of these areas where we've hidden our power is one of these eggs and we can power up. We can gain our power back from that area of our life. And the way that we do that is with something called the process. So the process, I'm just going to give a quick overview because I highly recommend reading the book. The process is essentially when we run into an area of discomfort, that's our signal that we found an egg. That's our signal that we've come into one of these areas where we've given away our power, where we've stored away some of our power and we need to open up that egg and get the power back, right? In this video game analogy. So when we hit a place of discomfort, like for example, we feel like we enter a, a new community, a new environment, and we feel like people don't like us, we don't belong, you know, this is, this is how it always goes, nobody ever likes me, I never, you know, I never fit in anywhere, right? That's an area of discomfort. That's an egg. It's like you've given away your power in that area. So now to reclaim the power, the first step is to actually feel the feelings of discomfort. And from the process of feeling the feelings, actually heightening the feelings of discomfort, intensifying them, and letting them move through. And then from that place of allowing the discomfort to play out fully, there's sound, there's screaming, there's crying, there might be stomping, there might be hitting things, hopefully just inanimate things, pillows or screaming into towels or whatever. But the allowing that emotion to move through and then when we do that, then stating the truth, like I am powerful. I am an unlimited powerful being, you know, I am consciousness incarnate, whatever it is. And he gives you a whole bunch of phrases that you can use, but essentially claiming your power back. And from that place, just allowing yourself to feel powerful and heighten those feelings of power and all that. And I'm not going to go all the way into, you know, all the ways that you can do this, all the circumstances, situations, but essentially read the book. 
And you can apply this at any time. You can apply this in the middle of your day. You can apply this in the morning. You can do this at night. You can, you know, hold on to things and save them for later. You're like, oh, that was really uncomfortable. But you're not in a situation that you can do it. You can do it later. But essentially, once you start doing this and reclaiming power from all these areas where you felt discomfort, you slowly start to unlock your power and you basically bust through the money game. And it's not just about money. You bust through that whole phase one game where you are limited and you are, are powerless. So one of the things that I love about this, and I briefly mentioned it earlier, is that it parallels so much of what I've been learning from all these other places. You may have heard me talk about the 12 stages of healing, Donald Epstein's book. This parallels the 12 stages of healing. Uh, Beyond Victim Consciousness by Lynn Forrest, all about the drama triangle and the victim hero villain triad. It parallels that. It's the same process that you use there. It's the same process that my mentor, Nani Leia Diamond, has taught me in our Sacred Feminine Leadership Circle. So this process seems pretty universal and it's positioned kind of like a game, so it's fun to do. In sum, I highly recommend this book. I hope that you check it out and put your comments below and let me know how how the book landed for you. If you're a coach, a consultant, an expert, a superstar of some sort, and you're looking to up-level your business, your life, let's connect. You can find me at superstardiscoverycall.com. Let's discuss if and how I can support you.